Hi, I'm Jay Banner, Director of the Environmental Science Institute. And here we are in Welch Hall at the beginning of the outreach lecture. Before the lecture tonight, we have a series of pre-lecture hands-on activities. Let's go take a look at some of them. This activity night is called the Blubber Glove, and tonight's lecture is all about Antarctic waters and all the animals that can, how can they survive in this kind of water? We talk about the layer of insulation skin and the fat under their skin cells that keeps them in this icy, icy cold environment well below zero degrees Celsius. So right here we have an ice bath. We ask the participants to stick their hand in the blubber glove in the icy, icy cold ice bath and how long can they stay in there? Meanwhile, sands, blubber. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. My name is Fred Engelkemeyer and I'm with the University of Texas Solar Vehicles team. We've brought our solar powered vehicle here. As you see, we have the the body of the car and um, the top. We, we just took the top off for show purposes so you can see all the electrical systems in the car. This vehicle can go um, up to 60 miles an hour. Hey, today we're talking about Antarctica and the glaciers and melting and all of that, so we're having snow cones. They're amazing and delicious. Hey. Hey, we're the Science Undergraduate Research Group, also known as Surge, and today we're helping out at the ASI event. It's Global Warming, and um, our booth today is, uh, we have liquid nitrogen, and we're freezing stuff, and we're allowing the kids to actually hammer it, um, of course, with safety goggles. And we have the balloons, we're giving them frozen marshmallows, it's really cool. For a balloon, it'll just shrink, and once you take it out, it'll actually come back to a balloon, its original size. This is the alligator snapper. They are a threatened species in Texas. They only live in northeast Texas. They don't live here in Austin. But these get to be the largest freshwater turtle in the United States. Uh, males can get over 200 pounds. They live a long time. This animal is 14 years old. And they have a unique way of catching their food with a built-in lure in their mouth. They have a tongue that looks like a worm. And they'll camouflage themselves in the mud and gape like this with the tongue in the bottom of the mouth wiggling. And the fish come over to eat, catch that worm, and he's got dinner without even moving. Well, the display you're looking at here is called the flubber exhibit, but really it's simulating what glaciers do when, when they flow down mountains. This one has a rough bed, so the rock that the glacier is flowing over is really rough, whereas over here it's not. So you'd expect this one would move a little faster because it's not dealing with the added resistance that this one is. This one has a really shallow slope, but it's flowing the fastest because we've actually put olive oil on the surface, which acts to speed it up. That's a lot like what happens in real glaciers when water gets funneled to the surface and accelerates the ice down the slope. I like that the teacher materials um, come along with the lecture, and so you can get a copy of the lecture along with notes and teaks alignment and all that stuff. So that's pretty cool. I've been to every lecture this year. Uh, they've been wonderful because they've all actually been on the topic that I teach. I have my kids uh, from McNeil High School come as well. Uh, it's an extra credit project for them. The CD-ROMs uh, and the information uh, that professors share with us uh, are great resources for us to use in our high school classes. Even though if they're not in the field that I, you know, I, I teach, uh, I still come uh, just to enrich myself as a science teacher and to be better qualified to answer kids' questions. This is probably something like 50 lectures, and I bet I've seen 35 or 40 of them. Now, I really appreciate Jay uh, working on these things and getting these set up for high school teachers. I think it's a great way to use colleges uh, to help the high schools and to motivate the high school kids to see what's out there the actual see the researchers and get real experience at an early age about what science really is.